Hi everyone in cloud computing and welcome to episode 60 of the Cloud Computing for the C-Suite show featured on YouTube and podcast with Brad Nelson and internationally recognized and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. This week, we're excited to have Mark Thiel on our show as our special guest. Mark's successful career in IT spans 30 years and is focused on both operating roles and on driving IT innovation efficiency and cloud adoption across enterprises of all sizes. Prior to joining Ericsson, Mark was the CIO and Chief Strategy Officer at Appsera, which was actually acquired by Ericsson. Mark is also the president and founder of Data Center Pulse, an organization created to promote best practices in the data center industry. Mark speaks globally at leading industry events on topics like cloud adoption, data center, IT organization, edge computing, and much more. Hi, Mark. It's great to have you on the C-Suite show this week, and thank you for joining us. Hey, Brad, David, a pleasure. Appreciate you inviting me. Thank you. Excellent. That's no, really great to have you. And we've just done the Australia show, which was a huge amount of fun. So uh, if you're watching the C-Suite show now, make sure you go back and watch the Australia show as well. Uh, Mark's been great, a great guest so far, and I'm sure he'll continue to be so. He's full of great knowledge around the 5G network and edge computing. So it's, uh, it's really enjoyable. And, and Dave, hi to you too. See you sitting there waiting patiently. Uh, great to have you on the C-Suite show this week, as always. <laughs> so it was great to be here. It's great to have Mark on the show. Let him learn more about edge computing. Absolutely. A warm welcome to you both. Well, look, in this week's show, we're talking about edge computing will drive growth for storage companies, but vendors will also need to think differently about how data is stored and moved. So I guess the opening question then to you first, Dave, is should the sea levels in the storage industry address this threat? It seems to me that edge computing is going to be more computers. It's going to be more storage systems. It's going to be an opportunity for the storage companies to differentiate themselves in a market that's growing. And I'm not quite sure that this is even going to be an issue for them. And so a lot of these things are uh, that I call false threats are really kind of occurring with the advent of you know cloud computing. It started to grow. Um, the ability to do big data systems, the ability to do serverless computing, and you know all these things which are really kind of tactical technologies. The technology business in general, specifically the uh, infrastructure guys, in this case storage, you know, have a tendency to have kittens over it, and I'm not quite sure they need to. I think that this is more positive than negative. I think that they'll sell more uh, units of storage. Uh, these are more things that they can put storage within, you know, whether that's SSD or actually mechanical, you know, trip to traditional magnetic storage. Um, so I'm not quite sure what the issue is, but I'm seeing this everywhere, and even people calling me and asking me, uh, uh, you know, in confidence about, you know, the future of the industry and whether edge computing is going to disrupt any of this. And I said, it certainly is going to disrupt it. It's going to allow you to make more money as long as you position your products in the right way. So, so Mark, where am, I, where am I going wrong with this? I, I think, actually, David, I think you're um, right on track. I mean, if I had to pick a problem, it wouldn't necessarily be in the ability for the hardware uh, builders of disk drives to accommodate changes that occur. And we can talk a little bit about where there might be opportunities or architectural design improvements or varieties of, um, of storage devices that uh, add more value in an edge environment. But realistically, I think the biggest two opportunity spaces from a, from a risk or from a lack of effective coverage today uh, are more around uh, data governance, or as a good friend of mine, Rich Miller likes to say, uh, data hub husbandry, right? The ability to, to effectively put data where it's supposed to be um, identify whether or not you need to keep it, whether it needs to be secured, uh, how to categorize it, um, whether to send it upstream, keep it downstream, how to parse what you've saved and, and only send the 5% that's actually useful upstream and dump the rest. Those tools, I think, and many more, uh, including and especially including uh, the security aspects for storage maintenance and management, I think are huge opportunities. But within the disk drive uh, framework itself. I mean, the disk drive companies, the bottom line is the disk drive companies have outpaced the traditional x86 market. They're already providing and continue to provide better performance on smaller units um, at a faster clip of improvement than the x86 market can. And, and they've been doing that for, I don't know, David, you probably know this better than I do, but for at least the last five years. Uh, and I think that that's accelerating and network is similar. But if I were to target 
areas of opportunity, I would say, um, you know, the, and this, this, and actually I would love your take on this, David, because sometimes I get too, um, too much into the, you know, Mark's in high school and he's building his Mustang and he's going to put bigger headers and bigger carburetors than he really needs just because he wants to go fast. There's no real value, but um, I, I have this distinct feeling and I've got maybe a little bit of evidence to support it that what's likely to happen at the edge once it becomes a land rush for companies to develop there and build infrastructure there and or utilize it to improve their businesses um, there will be a new standard for what is successful from a customer experience standpoint either in the form of how much interaction can you have in real time with the customer to just how much delay is there on the phone when they're using a specific app or, or all of the above. And I think what um, companies are going to be doing is tr in, in, in Mark's car parlance is every company that can figure out a way to afford it and, and justify it from a customer um, experience standpoint is going to try to one up the other folks at the edge. And they're going to try to find uh, how they can provide more data more efficiently um, uh, with less impact to the customer, uh, how they're going to minimize the impact to the device the customer is holding, um, uh, how they're going to provide, uh, you know, more of a, of a true immersive experience. And I think our assumptions, our historical um, assumptions, and I've been fighting these for years in the traditional IT environment of, oh, if it hits a certain latency, then we're fine. Um, you know, I think that I think that's bollocks. Uh, I think that that's going away, um, and uh, I don't um, I don't know how fast we'll see those changes occurring. But um, I really think that the disk drive companies potentially could benefit from finding ways to make CPUs appear even more effective than they are. Uh, whether that's with you know more solid state or whether that's with more um, uh, localized RAM, or whether that's um, uh, better positioning of, of you know, real-time data based on its uh, perceived importance, whatever it is. But I do think um, that we're going to get into this arms race, as it were, for providing the most uh, effective experience at the edge. And, and those storage companies that can leverage that and benefit from that uh, are likely to um, make the most money. Yeah, I could agree, couldn't agree with that more. And I, I think that uh, the reason I put this article in there, quite frankly, I wanted someone like you to interpret it for me because, you know, I'm seeing this stuff all the time and getting these questions uh, in terms of different, uh, you know, disruptions that are occurring in particular markets from technology providers, things like that. So it's kind of con contraindicated. It says edge computing will drive the growth of storage companies, but vendors will need to think about differently about how data is stored and moved. And the reality is I don't think they need to think differently at all. I think this is about traditional ways and how we deal with data movement and storage and data integration. I think the, uh, the complexity is, and we talked about this in the last show, you're going to have a small computer between you and the uh, source and target systems that you're dealing with. And I think the reason we're doing that is because it doesn't make sense to sing, send every byte back to a centralized cloud-based system. Right. Um, if especially if we're using, you know, creative response. I mean, working on um, some motorcycle stuff, um, you know, right now with a big manufacturer. The reality is that, you know, I can't send things back over a cellular network to a cloud provider to check to see if the information is in good order and that it's responding to something that's critical. It has to get an instantaneous response if there's a truck heading at you, you know, or if uh, if there's a the, the brakes are overheating, if uh, you know, something's wrong with your engine. And I think that, you know, we end up having edge devices and cars and motorcycles and skateboards, you know, pretty much mm -hmm. everything we drive as well as in our house. All of those things need storage and they don't need a ton of storage as I'm finding, but they need more storage than we think they need. And over time, yeah. that's going to grow because guess what? If I can do more at the edge and I have this great response time that's coming back from these edge-based devices, this thing cost me 50 bucks. The storage system cost me 50 bucks on top of it. That, guess what? That's where the stuff's going to live. And as an architect, you know, when I look at you know, cloud computing, edge-based devices, mobile computing, things like that, I'm going to put the data in the processing that's going to occur at the device that's going to have the best performance for the applications that I'm running. I could care less where it is. So if we're replicating, we're going to have more computers, more devices. They're going to need more storage. 
there's not a problem here. I guess we both agree on that, correct? No, I, I totally agree on that. I mean, I, I uh, you know, I get asked this question on a regular basis, just about you know the future of, of storage, and and every time every time someone makes a leap forward in the amount of capacity they can store on any you know a quarter inch of disk, uh, I say that all we have to do from a historical standpoint, and I think this is a perfect ana analogy to the potential creation of again what I like to call the edge marketplace, is that let's just go back thirty years. Um, uh, yes, I've been around long enough to worry about IT for more than 30 years. Um, so at the at the beginning of that 30 years, people were really making the move from um, mainframes and what were considered minis at the time to having more towers in their companies. Uh, towers from Dell and HP are actually more compact in HP at the time, et cetera. And um, those towers were costing about $25,000 a piece. And... Within eight to 10 years, those towers were being replaced by 1U servers. Now, some people call those blades, I call them 1U servers, because they took up a whole rack unit or two of a, of a computer rack, and they usually had one or two processors in them uh, as a direct replacement, effectively, for the functionality of a tower server, with some, uh, maybe some uh, minuses in overall flexibility, but Overall, it was a fairly good replacement, and they were about five or six thousand dollars compared to twenty-five thousand. Well, did we see a drop in how many servers were bought? No. In fact, we saw an acceleration of server sales. Now, you go forward even just six years, from two thousand-ish to two thousand and six, where uh, technologies like Zen and VMware and, and uh, eventually Hyper-V begin to take over in the marketplace. Now, why between 2006, 2016, wouldn't we, even with trending growth in IT, why wouldn't we have cut the amount of servers in the world by at least two thirds from where they were in 2008? But in fact, we have probably four or five times as many servers in the world today as we did in 2008. Four times as many physical servers. And each one of those physical servers, by the way, on average, has a 10,000% improvement in overall assumed performance, although some of that is Intel speak, but even if it's a 1,000% improved performance, combined with multiple uh, um, actual CPUs on each core as compared to their brethren from the 10 years previously. And so I think to David's point about storage at the edge, when you start thinking about smart houses, you start thinking about parks that can talk to you, you start thinking about the coordination of, of any number of services that might make up a city and what the understanding of the coordination of those services might be uh, and how they could be adjusted or managed better depending on the weather or depending on the season or whether it's a holiday. Uh, I mean, we could just, we could talk about those potential opportunities to leverage more data, to share more data and find more reasons to keep more data. We could spend hours and not run out of scenarios. So I completely agree that the biggest problem that we're likely to see is storage companies finding more ways to put more in smaller spaces because they're going to continue to need to sell more units. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think ultimately this is not a problem. I, I think that the storage companies are actually thinking it's a problem. And I think the reality is that they need to adjust to, to, to understand changes in the market. My concern would be if I was investing in a storage company that they're not able to see it, that they're you know, kind of looking at themselves as an infrastructure company, you know, they're not that cool to work for anymore. You know, storage is storage, a commodity-based system. And the reality is, is I think the ability to deliver storage systems on very ever-changing you know, devices as, as we're moving forward is really where the money is going to be made. And I think the infrastructure is very important. Love to get your thoughts on this, Brad. Yeah, like you say, there's no real problem. I just think from a an infrastructure storage point of view and a, a data center point of view, it's it's a, an opportunity, isn't it? But it's looking it's looking at the business as, as it's evolving at, at such speed and and that's now governed by a, an increase in network capability such as 5G. So it's the turning point of if you haven't already thought about it from a, a point of view of storage, then why are you still in business? Because you know you're you're already not you know primed to move forward into this next industry this uh, or this next sort of evolution of 5g networking so yeah like you guys i can't see a problem with it i think if you've already got the capabilities why have you not already foreseen 5g and how it will you know influence um, an edge computing uh, network I, I just don't get that so 
Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. it's a, just a simple story, but every single time in our history of technology, when we've created a leapfrog forward or an evolution, a, a noticeable evolution improvement in capability forward, there have always been those people who say, we'll never be able to fill that up. And then not even two years later, we find that that evolutionary leap was a minimum requirement for the successful continuation of our industry. And we're going to see a lot of that over the next 10 years at the edge. Yeah, I, I agree there, Mark. Absolutely. Here, here. David, it rolls us on nicely. You guys have covered so much here. You know, it really is a great topic today. So, you know, if you're watching this now, you know, make sure you scroll back to the Australia show as well, because we've, we've done two fantastic shows uh, today. But we've got to that point now where we, we'd like to hear your top three tips, Dave, if that'd be uh, good for you. Yeah, first and foremost, edge, you know, CEOs, storage CEOs need to be proactive and think about opportunities that are occurring in the market. It drives me nuts when people in the technology field don't understand why things are changing. Just by nature of the industry, it's going to be constantly changing. Your ability to anticipate those changes and get ahead of those changes, capitalize on those changes is going to be, um, is going to be absolutely paramount to your success. Uh, so all these storage companies should really be thinking differently in terms of this thing not being a problem, this being an opportunity and how we can retool ourselves to make it uh, to, to capitalize on it. Follow the market shifts, but don't be uh, you know a, a, a fast follower. And so your ability to kind of stay alive in this business as a CEO is going to be your ability to kind of stay ahead and anticipate the market. And so by the time something shifts, like edge computing is popping up right now, and you have to follow in essence retool for the edge-based market, I think it's going to be too late. And so you have to think proactively in how things are happening. And don't be afraid to hit the reset button in many instances. I think one of the reasons that we get a little uh, fearful is that we're going to put out a product that's going to fail. I think the reality is that storage computing companies or storage companies really need to understand they're going to have to fail at least 25% of the time. They're going to put out things the market doesn't like, they don't anticipate the product's going to be in the market, and that's okay. They're going to learn from those failures, but more importantly, those 75% of the products that they announce in the market are going to be successes, either minor successes or major successes, and that's the way you win the game. Yeah, yep, yeah, absolutely, Dave. Uh, look, guys, thanks very much, and Dave, thanks for your top tips, by the way. My pleasure. And Mark, thanks for being part of the C-Suite show this week. It's great having you on. Oh, it's good fun. I mean, it's a great conversation, and, and it's... Um, you know, it's, it's basically talking about what I'm living and breathing on a daily basis these days. Excellent. It's great having you as a special guest and looking forward to the training show coming up. So, uh, yeah, really looking forward to recording that. Uh, so, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks for your time on this Sunday afternoon for you. Uh, and, look, you can get Mark on Twitter, which is mthiel10. So check him out there. Dave's on Twitter, which is at David Lindicum. Uh, I'm also on Twitter, which is at Nelson underscore Hilliard and all the other social media streams as well. All the links are down below in the description box and so check that out. Uh, David writes some great blogs for us as well. Again, there's a link below. Um, we're also on podcast as well. So this is on iTunes and Stitcher so you don't just have to watch us you can listen to us on the train or something which is always good uh, but yeah so thanks for watching and until next week